right. So uh, thank you for joining our um, Warrior Wednesday presentation on interviewing basics. Uh, this semester we have uh, shared a lot of different um, career readiness resources with our community to kind of build up to the interview. So we talked about resume writing, um, how to prepare a cover letter, networking, um, job searching, LinkedIn, things like that. And so uh, once you have completed all of those steps and you've been doing your job search and you've been invited to the interview, uh, our next step would be to talk more about um, how to prepare for the interview. Um, so just a quick little bit about our team. Um, we are led by Michelle Bollinger. She's our director. Uh, Michelle um, has come to us from Mizzou uh, University or Missouri State University about um, a year and a half ago. And with her, she came with a wealth of knowledge and a lot of great ideas to kind of take our team to the next level. Uh, Michelle also, um, as her time here continued, she became a uh, Clifton Strengths coach. Uh, so you can come and chat with Michelle about your top five strengths and learn how they um, help guide you through your work and through your interactions uh, with people. Um, my name is Jessica Donner. I am the coordinator for career and professional development. Um, I have been with the university for three years. Uh, Prior to my role here at a and Central Texas, I worked for Carnegie Mellon University. In that role, I uh, was the first person to review a resume and I conducted the interview process from uh, you know, screening all the way through hiring and onboarding uh, with various hiring managers throughout the division. Um, and so uh, that is what sparked my interest in career services. And then uh, we PCS here as a military spouse, we moved here and I found myself working in career services and found my passion work. So I, I meet with uh, students one-on-one, -on -one, I give presentations, and I offer all things career readiness. Also on our team is Kirsten Martinez. She's our senior administrative associate. Kirsten is a certified veteran career specialist. Uh, that is a credential that she recently acquired. So she's here to help all of our veteran students and helping them to interpret their um, experiences into civilian language. I can also help with that. But uh, Kirsten is also uh, a mega warrior in my mind. Um, prior to joining career and professional development, Kirsten, as a undergraduate student, worked in the uh, Blue Coat Ambassador Team. She was a intern for uh, Career and Professional Development. She also worked in the Writing Center. So a lot of times you may be working with Kirsten as you're preparing your um, application materials for things like internships. If you have to write essays, um, she's going to be the best sounding board to help make sure that you have a well written statement. Um, finally, on our team is Candace Johnson. Candace Johnson is our career service specialist. Uh, she meets with students one on one for resume reviews. Um, she will be uh, adding some additional uh, things that she will be able to meet with students about, including uh, federal resumes and mock interviews and job search assistance. Uh, so if you're in our office, uh, you may be interacting with any one of us, um, including a couple of our student workers who are not pictured here. But we may be a small team, but we are mighty and we are here to help you with all things for readiness. And today we're going to be talking about interviewing. So on our agenda, uh, we will be talking about um, interview preparation. How do you get ready for the interview? What you should be expecting when you're in the interview? Um, how to answer questions using the STAR method? What to do after the interview and follow up with employers? So diving in, um, the, whenever you are doing your job search and you're preparing your application materials, um, you may be applying for to a lot of different types of jobs and a lot of different industries, depending on your major and how wide you are casting your net. And so a few things that you'll want to do once you have accepted an invitation for an interview is to make sure that you ask questions uh, whenever you're setting up the interview. So what type of interview will be uh, held? Will it be a group, a panel? Um, will you be meeting virtually or face to face? Who will you be meeting with? Um, make sure that you're confirming all of those details. Um, it's easy to get caught up in the excitement of finally landing the interview, but make sure that you're getting all the information that you need to be successful to show up on time and prepared. 
You can schedule an appointment with Career and Professional Development to help you get ready. One of our resources is the mock interview, so we can kind of put you through the um, uh, the pace of an interview. We can talk about some of your answers and help you to prepare. Um, and also, you want to make sure that you're reviewing your research. So whenever you were applying for the job, you were doing research on each of the organizations that you were applying with to make sure that they were going to be a good fit for you. Because you probably have applied to multiple organizations, it's going to be important that you uh, review that information that you uh, were researching so that way you are re-familiarizing yourself with the organization and you can speak about it. Because you will be likely asked in the interview uh, what you know about our organization, so make sure that you're prepared for that. A few other things that you're going to want to make sure that you're preparing pre-interview is any notes uh, that you have um, that you want to take with you so that way you can keep yourself on track and any questions that you have for the interviewers. You want to make sure that you're bringing yourself with about five to six questions that you can ask at the end of the interview whenever they hand it over to you for any questions that you have. Make sure that these are going to be value adding questions. And so when I say that, we uh, don't necessarily need to ask, when do you plan to make a decision? They'll likely let you know that at the end of the interview. If they don't, you can certainly ask. Um, but you want to make sure that you're adding uh, value to the interview and getting some of those questions answered that maybe you haven't had answered throughout the interview process. And so some of these things might be what's important to you. Um, and so one of the things that I like to ask whenever I'm in an interview is what are you most excited about your work right now? And the reason I ask that of interviewers is because it's really important for me to work with a team that is excited about the work that they're doing. Um, if they take a pause and it's really a hard question for them to answer, that might be a red flag for me. Uh, to reconsider what my option is here. Um, of course, if they the opposite happens and they start getting really excited and pumped up about something, that's going to tell me a little bit more about them as well. So think about what might be important to you. So these could be things like, can you tell me about your company or team culture? What is the uh, day in the life of this position meant to look like? What are some of the challenges that I would face if I were put into this position in the first six months? Those are questions that you can ask that are going to help you not only understand their organization and their team culture, but also understand what um, things you might be facing in the role um, if you were to accept a position. So make sure that you have about five or six of those. The reason I would say five to six is because some of your questions might actually get answered during the interview process. So if you have a question about team culture and they start out the interview telling you about their team, you've already answered that question. So we don't want to ask them to repeat themselves. So make sure that you have a number of questions that you can ask uh, throughout the interview. Um, and you always want to make sure that you have at least two questions to ask at the end. So. Uh, think of some of those things that are going to be valuable to you um, and make sure that you have those with you and that you're prepared. Make sure that you know your resume and cover letter. So if you've met with our team, you may uh, know that you might have multiple versions of your resume. Um, if you are applying for different types of roles in different industries, you might be highlighting different skills and experiences on your resume. So make sure that you're re-reviewing the resume that you use to apply for that job. So that way you know what skills and experiences you are highlighting for them. And that way, when they ask you to expand upon those things, you are ready. Another thing to consider is rereading your cover letter. So you wrote a fantastic cover letter that helped compel them to review your resume and invite you for the interview. In your cover letter, you let them know why you're excited about their position, what makes you a qualified candidate, and what sets you apart. So remember how you convince them to call you for the uh, interview and be ready to speak about it. Make sure that you practice your introduction. So you want to be prepared for the most difficult question that you're going to receive in the interview, and that's going to be tell us a little bit about yourself. If I were to ask you all to unmute yourself and answer this question now, would you be ready? The crickets have it. So if you're not ready, make sure to get ready. Um, if you're not sure uh, what should be included in your introduction, make sure that you come and see us. 
Uh, but I'll give you a quick cheat sheet right now that you can use to answer this question. You should introduce yourself as what you are doing, what your goals are, and how you're hoping to achieve them with their organization. So you might say something, my name is, you know, my name is Jessica Donner. I am a graduate student at a &M Central Texas working towards my master's in higher education leadership. My goal is to lead a career service center um, in providing career readiness resources to a diverse student body. My goal is to achieve a position as an assistant director here because I believe the student population uh, is will be best be served by my skills and expertise. And so something very quick, simple, who are you? What are you working on? What are your goals? And how are you hoping to achieve them with their organization? Make sure that you know where to go. Um, or if you are doing a virtual in interview that your space is set up clean and free of any distractions. So this is going to be incredibly important. I know in our previous slide, we talked about making sure that you were confirming the details. But if you're traveling to a place that you haven't been to before, perhaps a few days beforehand, during the same hour of the day, uh, take a quick trip towards that location and identify any traffic or um, uh, construction uh, that might cause a delay um, that way you can um, be ready to leave your home on time uh, make sure that you know where um, your interview is going to take place so maybe there's a suite number or a specific office suite, uh, location that you need to go to if you don't have those details just follow up with HR and make sure that you get all that information ahead of time if you're doing a virtual interview, um, it's going to be incredibly important that your uh, workspace is going to be free of any distractions. Make sure that it's well lit. We'll talk more about this in just a moment. If you don't have an interview space for a virtual interview, a couple of the places on campus that I recommend are going to be the quiet rooms that are located on the second floor in the library. You can certainly come uh, and meet with us and we can make a space in our offices available for you ahead of time if you let us know uh, with a few days notice. Um, or we could also find additional spaces on campus, perhaps a classroom um, or a vacant office. So if you're having trouble finding a place, um, let us know. We can help you find one. You can also make use of those quiet rooms in the library. They get excellent light and they have a nice neutral background. All right. Any questions so far before we move on to the next piece that you're going to prepare? All right, if you do have any, please feel free to raise your hand um, or um, unmute yourself. I'd love to hear from you. So the next thing that you're going to want to make sure that you um, are getting ready is going to be your attire for your interview. So um, make sure that you have something that you're prepared to wear and that you're looking your best. Uh, the recommendation is that you uh, dress business professional. Um, so sometimes you'll hear that you'll want to dress one level up of the organization that you're applying for. But I'm going to tell you that it's going to be important for you to really just be making your best impression. And I recommend going with business professional each time. Uh, business professional is going to include um, slacks uh, or a knee length skirt for ladies. Um, you could wear uh, dress shoes. Uh, whether they're flat shoes or with a moderate heel. I wouldn't go with anything that has too high of a heel because you may be doing some walking. I recently um, had an opportunity to uh, be on an interview panel and we did a tour of campus. And so um, if you're not ready to walk, uh, those high heels could be an issue for you. You could be finding yourself in some pain later. So just make sure that you're comfortable. Um, you want to wear a, a crisp, clean shirt, um, a button down shirt or a nice blouse. Um, and I do recommend going with the blazer for uh, those of you that like to wear or are interested in wearing ties. You could do a basic tie or a bow tie. Um, if that's your style would be fine. Just make sure that you're choosing some basic neutral colors. You don't want to go in in lime green um, unless that's your accent color and it looks great on you. On my complexion, it would be awful. But make sure that you are making good choices. Um, some good colors to go with are going to be black, tan and navy blue. Uh, if you wear jewelry, make sure that you have minimal jewelry. You don't want to have a lot of baubles and things that are going to be distracting um, to you or to your interviewers. 
um, I do recommend that you try it on. So sometimes we pick out an outfit that we think we're going to look amazing in or that we're going to be comfortable in and we put it on and we absolutely hate it. Um, so make sure that as you're choosing your outfit, you're trying it on, you're sitting in it, you're standing in it, you're walking in it. Make sure that you're going to be comfortable and that you're not going to be doing a lot of sh shifting and um, fixing uh, while you're wearing this outfit. So sit in it for a couple of minutes, stand in it, make sure you take a walk around your home, make sure it's going to be comfortable and easy to move in. We're in Texas here. If you're in a Texas interview, you might want to wear cotton if you're wearing a, a, a blazer that way it can kind of wick um, and you don't turn into um, a drippy mess of because it can get really warm here. So make sure that you are uh, preparing your outfit. It's clean. It's pressed if necessary and need be. Um, but make sure that you can stand in it, sit in it and walk in it. If you don't know uh, what to wear, you can always schedule an appointment to meet with our office. We can help you um, through some of the items that you have in your own wardrobe. If you wanted to bring a couple of items and we can offer you our um, advice. Or uh, if you like, uh, you can visit our career closet. So we have a career closet here in our office uh, that is um, stocked with uh, traditional male and female um, items as well as gender neutral clothing. And so you can come in, try on a few things and you can borrow those items for free uh, for your interview. So um, you can make sure that you're feeling and looking your best. So if you don't have something to wear or if the outfit that you thought was going to be great isn't, schedule an appointment to meet with us and we'll take you through the career closet and help you find something great. All right. Um, let's talk about the different types of interviews. So there are a lot of different types of interviews that you might experience as you're um, going through your job search and interacting with employers. Uh, the first interview type that I'm going to talk with you about is the phone interview. So phone interviews can be traditional over the phone, uh, one or a group of individuals that you might be talking with on the phone, or it could be a pre-recorded um, interview, and we'll talk about what that would look like. Uh, the most uh, traditional type of interview is our in-person interviews, and this could be with a panel. Or you could be interviewing in a group. You could be at a meal, or it could be one-on-one -on -one with a hiring manager. And then, of course, is the virtual um, interview, and this could be with a panel or one-on-one. -on -one. So let's talk more about phone interviews. So phone interviews um, are a great cost-effective way for employers to screen applicants. Um, so you, employers may be taking advantage of phone interviews um, to save on costs, and that's gonna be important for industries that have been hit fairly um, hard by the uh, pandemic. Uh, they'll typically last between about 10 and 30 minutes. So uh, a pre-screening interview might occur with um, the human resources department where they're gonna ask you basic questions to make sure that you are qualified for the position before moving on to the second phase of the interview. Um, or it could be a full interview, about 30 minutes, and it could be with a single person or multiple individuals at a time. So it's gonna make sure that you're, you're going to want to make sure that you're prepared to, excuse me, answer questions about yourself and some of your experiences and skills. Um, I would approach a phone interview um, that's with an individual or a group um, the same way that you would approach a face-to-face -face interview. Make sure that you are dressed, um, that you are in a place free of distractions, that you have a charged phone or your phone charger with you and plugged in so that way you don't have a battery issue. Make sure that uh, your environment is free of distractions. Have your questions ready um, and, a, phone, and a, a pen and a notepad is a great idea. That way you can capture um, questions or specific items that you want to touch on while it's happening uh, because in a phone interview, it can be more difficult to um, ask uh, the interviewers to repeat themselves or um, ask another part of a question. So make sure that you are approaching it the same way with the same level of uh, interest as you would a face-to-face -face interview um, and be ready to interact with some folks on the phone. Um, if you, uh, again, don't have a place to go, whereas it's going to be free of distractions 
um, and that you will be able to hear well, uh, let us know. We can help you find a place on campus or make one of our offices available to you so that way you can have um, your best opportunity to interact with some folks. All right, so the in-person interview. So an in-person interview is the most common type of interview, and this could be with one person or a panel of people, and they will generally last between 30 minutes to I've been a part of interviews that have been the full day, depending on um, the round of interview that you're in or the level of position that you're applying for. So I went on an interview where I was on a university campus for about six hours and they had different sessions of interviews for me with different constituent constituency groups on campus. And so make sure that you're prepared for something like that if you get to that point or if you're applying for positions that would um, end with a final interview that might be an entire day on location. Um, but your first uh, round interview um, may be in person with a panel of people or even a group interview. And so um, these types of in-person interviews can be conducted in a lot of different types of uh, settings. You may be in an individual office like mine here. You may be um, in a conference room uh, or you may be asked to join them for a meal. Um, whether it's going to be um, part of your interview, like the interview I was telling you about where I was there for six hours, we did have lunch, um, or if they are the type of organization or hiring manager that want to interact with you in a more casual setting. So make sure you're getting all those details when you're scheduling the appointment, that way you can be prepared. Um, during a face-to-face -face interview, um, a lot of common questions are going to be asked whenever um, you are going through that. So behavioral questions and situational questions, and we'll talk more about those when we get to answering questions. Uh, so be prepared. Remember, you're going to review uh, the job description, review your uh, application materials and the research that you did on the organization that you should be ready to go. For a group, um, interview. This is going to be a setting where you may be meeting with other candidates and interviewing for the same job at the same time. And so I recently was working with a student who had a panel interview where he was in the interview with six other candidates and they were being asked questions by a panel of um, hiring managers. And so um, whenever you're meeting in a group like that and you're all basically feeling like you're competing against one another, remember uh, that um, it's important to show that you're a team player. So, of course, we all want to stand out from the crowd and speak up and have answers and solutions. But being a good team player is also going to be very important. So if you've answered first on the first question, give somebody else an opportunity to answer the next question first. Um, always assume that interviewers are listening and watching. And so if you are in a group and you are led into an interview space and left unattended by the um, interviewers, make sure that you are conducting yourself as if they are still watching. Um, and so if you wouldn't say or do something in the interview, make sure that you're not doing it while you're waiting for the interview to begin or continue. Um, a panel interview is actually very common, especially in higher education. Uh, this is going to be when you're going to be meeting with more than one interviewer. Uh, so you will be the only candidate in this situation, but you may be being interviewed by uh, two or three or even more um, interviewers. So I was in an uh, uh, interview situation where I was being interviewed by eight people. <laughs> and so it can be quite intimidating. Uh, but make sure that you are um, following the panel's lead. So you might have mixed personalities on the panel. And so one may be more jovial um, and more laid back, while another may be by the book and a little bit more um, stoic. And so just make sure that you are um, prepared, that you're engaging, that you're listening, making good eye contact with each person on the panel while you're answering your questions um, and follow their lead. If, uh, if, if there's somebody like me on your interview panel, I might make a joke 
it's okay to have a little bit of fun and be playful. Um, but whenever you're interacting with some of those individuals that are going to be a little bit more strict, um, you want to make sure that you meet them where they are. I do want to honorably mention the meal interview. So these are less common right now because of the nature of um, the pandemic and how businesses have changed their interview processes. But you may still be asked to uh, join interviewers for a meal like I was when I was on campus for a full day. Um, and so this is going to be a much more informal situation. And so whenever you're invited to a meal, you want to make sure that um, you are um, following good uh, meal etiquette. Um, and if you're not sure what that is, come and see us. We can talk more about it. It's a little bit outside of the scope of our uh, workshop today. Um, but you want to make sure that you're sitting up straight, that you have your napkin on your lap, that you're allowing the others to order first. Um, you may be asked to order first and the interviewer would order last, allowing them to have control of the situation. Make sure that um, you avoid alcohol. So there may be some folks that will participate and have a glass of wine or something like that with dinner. Um, this is an interview, so make sure that you are aware and have control of all of your faculties. So no alcohol on your interview uh, lunch if you're invited uh, to another meal after you've gotten the job and you would like to enjoy a glass of wine, that would be fine depending on your work environment. But for the interview, let's go ahead and avoid that. Also be wary of messy foods. So you might be at a barbecue place and you might be tempted to get the the uh, rib platter, um, but make sure that you are not going to end up with a situation that will be embarrassing for you later. Um, finally, um, although it is traditional that the hiring manager will pick up the check on a meal interview, just have some cash with you um, just in case and be ready for anything. So make sure that you're prepared um, for that just in case as you would um, as you're preparing for everything else. So before I move on to the next interview type, does anybody have any questions about um, the in-person interview or um, the phone interview? I do want to go back to uh, the phone interview very briefly, and let me go back in this one, and talk to you a little bit more about the pre-recorded interviews. Um, so a pre-recorded interview is going to be um, an opportunity for you to answer some uh, predetermined questions. So you might be provided these questions in an email or on the application that you'll use to record it. You won't be interacting with an individual, but you would be recording your answers, either um, using your webcam and your microphone or your microphone only. Um, you may also call into this. And so if that is something that you encounter, um, they're fairly rare, but they do happen. Um, just be prepared for that. Um, and if you don't have the questions ahead of time, just be ready um, with answering questions the same way that you would um, as we'll go over in just a minute. All right. So let's talk about virtual interviews. These are much more common now, especially with the pandemic. Um, and, you know, I think that even as uh, the pandemic pandemic continues to recede a little bit, um, the technology is here and I don't think it's going to go anywhere. And it is much more cost effective than uh, and it's also easier to get people together if they're working in different locations. So um, the ease and um, the availability of video um, I think is going to be something that you will encounter throughout your job search, probably for the rest of your career. So when you're preparing for a virtual interview, you want to make sure that you're interviewing, uh, preparing the same way you would for a face to face interview. But you want to make sure that you are checking um, that you understand what platform you're using. So there's a lot of different types of virtual platforms out there. We've got Zoom and Teams. Um, Webex. So there's a number of them out there and a few others that I don't even know about. Um, so make sure that you're familiar with the platform that you're going to be using. I would do this a day or two before the interview. That way, if you have any technical issues, you have time to correct them. So make sure that you're double checking that you understand the platform, that it's installed and that it's accessible to you. Um, also, make sure that your interview space is clean and free of 
any distractions, make sure that you have good lighting. Um, you want to make sure that um, you are going to be comfortable in this space, but not too comfortable. So when you're in a uh, virtual interview, you want to make sure that you're sitting up straight, that you're not fidgeting around, that you're staying engaged with them. Um, I've heard some folks talk about um, you should be looking directly at the camera the entire time. Um, that can be difficult, especially if you're interviewing with multiple people that are on your screen and asking questions. So a virtual interview can be with an individual person or a group of people. And so just make sure that you're not um, fidgeting around too much. Um, make sure that you are facing the camera, um, but it's okay if you're not uh, staring into the camera the entire time. Again, if you don't have a space that you feel like you can use uh, for a virtual interview, please let us know. You can use one of the rooms in the library, or we could also make one of our offices available, <clears throat> or find you a space on campus that's going to be more appropriate for you. Okay, so let's talk about how we are going to answer questions. So this is probably the thing that gives um, most people a little bit of heartburn. This is the scariest part of an interview is answering those questions that they're going to be asking. So the first question that you'll prepare for is the how um, you're going to introduce yourself. So tell us a little bit about yourself. And then as you move through the rest of the interview, they're going to ask you different types of questions. So there are two types of questions that I wanna go over today. Um, but if you have any questions about any potential questions that you might hear, uh, please do schedule an appointment or shoot me a note and we can talk more about that offline. Um, but uh, you will be asked questions that are behavioral. And so these are questions are, that are designed to understand how you would behave in a situation. They want to know about the actions that you would take um, in a specific scenario, uh, and which takes us to the scenario question. And so a scenario question is going to ask you to um, draw on your experiences and tell me about a time when. Okay, so in our example here, we're going to be using this question, which is a behavioral and um, situational question. Tell me about a time when you were on a team and a member wasn't pulling their weight. So in this question, the employer is asking, tell me about a time, so this is going to be uh, situational, a team member wasn't pulling their weight, they're also going to be asking how your behavior was in this question. So what did you do? What did you do when you were on this team and they were not pulling their weight? So if you use the STAR method, you can feel really confident that you're answering each question uh, concisely and completely. So STAR is going to stand for situation, task, action, and result. So you're gonna to wanna to start out with the situation that you were in. So tell me about a time you were in a team when a member wasn't pulling their weight. So you want to use a detailed description uh, to set the scene. So you might say something like, I was assigned to a team that was responsible for implementing a new applicant tracking system, and one of my team members wasn't joining our meetings or completing their tasks on time, which caused the rest of the team to fall behind. And so now here is my situation. This is the situation I'm in. The next piece is going to be the task. What task was needed in the situation? So you may say something like, I spoke to them offline to address the issue. And when meeting with them, they, they told me that they were behind on another project because another team member quit. So they weren't able to dedicate as much time to our project. The next piece is going to be the action. So what action did you take in the situation? So I've told you about the situation. I've told you about the task that was needed, talking with them offline, and then sharing with me this information that they were behind on another project. So what action did I take? Once I understood the issue, we met with our supervisor to offer solutions to both projects and redistribute the work. So I worked with this individual to come up with solutions for both projects, and then we took it to our supervisor with some uh, potential um, solutions. The final piece of your um, answer should be R for result. So what was the result? What happened after you took your action? So you could, 
In our, in our answer, we say after the work was redistributed, both projects were completed. In fact, we completed them both on time. So um, when you're asked a question, make sure that you're thinking about what was the situation? What was the task that needed to be completed? What action did I take? And what was the result? You will get questions that are going to have a seemingly negative slant. So this team member wasn't pulling their weight. Make sure that whenever you're being given questions like that, you are keeping it in positive affirmative language. So remember to end with a positive. What did you learn could be the positive. So maybe there are situations that just were not great and they didn't end great and you don't really have a lot positive um, to say about it. A great thing to say that brings it back to that positive is what you learned from the situation. So maybe these projects didn't get completed ahead of time. Maybe what you learned is um, how to communicate with your team um, and how uh, to address issues with your supervisor and what you would do the next time you're in a situation like that. So remember that you're bringing it back to that positive. The STAR method can be used to answer both types of questions, both situational and behavioral. Um, it's OK for you to have a pen and paper available to you to take some quick notes or key words. That way you're making sure that you're answering the full question. Sometimes you'll be asked questions that have multiple parts. We are um, the worst at that sometimes in our team we want to know everything about you and we're really excited to get to know you so we might ask you a question that has two questions in one and so it's okay to take some quick notes just make sure that you're not uh, creating too long of a pause just a couple of uh, quick reminders to yourself so that way you're answering the full question take a brief moment i'm talking about like three to five seconds to think about the situation that you want to talk about um, when a team member wasn't pulling their weight and so it's hard to know exactly what questions you're going to be asked in an interview the best thing that you can do is make sure that you're reflecting on the job description that will help guide you into understanding the types of questions that they might be asking so if the job description has a lot of information about very technical uh, work that this position is meant to perform, then you might want to make sure that you are uh, preparing some of your technical expertise uh, prior to the interview and making sure that you're ready to answer questions about that. If in the question, if in the job description they mention teamwork a number of times, you may want to reflect on your experiences and think about those times that you were working in a team and having positive and challenging experiences, but remember that you always want to bring it back to that positive take. What did you learn? Um, you will be asked questions that are meant to, that are designed to help um, the uh, interviewers to understand how you will behave in a situation and how quickly you think on your feet. So uh, nobody is in the interview trying to stump you or trying to trick you or trying to knock you off balance. But really, uh, if you think about it, you might be in an interview that's scheduled for 30 minutes and you're meeting with four different people. So you have 30 minutes to get to know four people and those four people have 30 minutes to get to know you to make a decision. And so these questions are designed to help, excuse me, help you uh, understand more about um, their organization and some of the work that they're doing. But they're also designed to help them understand if you're going to be a good fit for their team. And so um, if you're feeling any concern about how you might answer some questions like this one, please do schedule a meeting with our team. We can come up with a list of questions based on a job description, or we can ask you some general questions so that you can reflexively reflect on your experiences and answer those questions using the situation that you were in, the task that was needed, the action that you took, and the result, um, and always kind of coming back to that positive. And so before I move on, does anybody have any questions about using the STAR method or the different types of questions that you might be asked in an interview? Uh, 
Okay. Um, if you come up with any, please let me know. All right. So uh, you've done all the hard work. You, you went to the interview. You answered all the questions. You were in the hot seat. You reflected on your experience. You used the STAR method. You were on time and prepared. And now it's over. So what do you do next? Uh, first, before following these steps on the screen, I'm going to tell you to take a breath. That's a big deal. OK, so you worked so hard on your resume and your cover letter and job searching. and You went through the interview, which can be nerve wracking and exciting. And there's a lot of emotions happening there. Give yourself a moment and give yourself some grace to recognize that you're halfway there. You've done half of the battle and now um, the last thing for you to do is follow up with the employers. You want to send a thank you note to your um, interviewers 24 to 48 hours after meeting with them. OK, so you don't want to send it from your car, from your cell phone the moment you walk away. Give it uh, a little bit of time. Reflect on your conversation with them. What were some of the things that they shared with you or that you discussed with them that really stood out to you? Um, you can send a follow up by email, which is uh, the most common now. If you know that they're making a decision fairly quickly, this is the method that I would recommend. But there is something to be said for the handwritten thank you note. If you know that they have a little bit more time in their timeline uh, for hiring uh, someone, I receive very few um, handwritten notes, but when I do, um, I always think they're so thoughtful and the uh, time and consideration that's put into them is definitely noted. Um, but you want to make sure that you're sending it out 24 to 48 hours after the interview. Make sure that you're thanking them for their time uh, that they've spent with you. Restate your interest for the position. And then you can reference connections made in the interview. So if you were talking about what they're most excited about in their work right now, reflect on that and share with them how much you appreciated them sharing that with you, how you feel like you would be a great contributor in that particular uh, project because of X, Y, and Z skill. So make sure that you are reflecting, giving yourself a moment and some grace to have your feelings and come down from the nerves of going through an interview and then construct a thoughtfully written thank you note 24 to 48 hours after. Make sure that again that you're thanking them for their time, making connections to that uh, conversation that you have with them and reestablish your interest in the position. Um, if some time has gone on and you're not sure where they are in their decision making process, and when I say some time, uh, give it a, a, a couple weeks. Give it a few weeks. Um, if you know that they're moving very quickly and you haven't heard anything, maybe a week. But in higher education and some other um, industries, it may take a little bit longer. There's, uh, especially if you're going into federal employment um, or state employment. Um, there's a lot of bureaucracy and red tape for each hire. So you want to give them some time so that they can work through their internal processes. But if it's been a few weeks and you haven't heard anything yet, you can follow up with the human resources department first um, and ask if the position is still open, if they're still making a decision. And you can also send a thoughtful note if they are still in the decision making process or human resources doesn't have a beat on where they are in their process, you can send a thoughtful uh, note back to your interviewers asking them if they're, you know, or offering any additional information that they may need. So you can say, I'd like to follow up with you again. I really enjoyed our time together on X date. Um, please uh, know that I'm still interested in the position and don't hesitate to reach out to me if there's any additional information that you need as you are considering your candidates. Um, so that is a very gentle way um, to uh, check in with them um, and see what happens. But no matter what, don't be discouraged. Um, even if you are not offered the position or even if you're still waiting, continue your job search. Keep looking for opportunities that you might be interested in. Continue to research organizations and submit your application. Always be interviewing. So even if you're waiting for a decision from a position that you might be interested in and you get a call for another interview, it's OK to accept that interview and go through that process. Um, keeping your options open and making sure that you are doing your best self-due diligence um, will help you to choose the uh, the 
position that is going to be best for you and your family. So don't become discouraged. Um, you may go on a number of interviews um, and not be getting, uh, given those positions, but know that there is one out there for you. We are here to help you um, to continue to move forward down that path in your job search and helping you identify um, positions or opportunities that you might be interested in. Um, so today we, we went over a lot of information fairly quickly, but I wanted to make sure that there would be time for questions because I know that interviewing can um, spark a lot of feelings and anxieties. And so I wanna make sure that we have some time for the group to share any of their thoughts or questions that um, maybe you've, anything that you'd like to go back to and discuss in any further detail um, or any of your experiences that you would like to talk through, um, there is time for that as well. So anything from the group, any questions or thoughts that we would like to discuss? So when sending a physical thank you note, how do we get their address? Are we just sending it to the main address? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, that's a great question. So um, when you're at the interview, so you may be sending it to the same location that you went to for an interview, but if it was a virtual interview, you can certainly reach out to the human resources department to make sure that you have the appropriate office number, or suite number for the people that you interviewed with. If you went physically to an interview, you can get their business card and mail it to the uh, address on their business card. Um, and you would send separate notes for each interviewer that you met with. Gotcha, Great thank question. you. Sure, um, any other thoughts or questions? No? Okay, that's fair. Um, it's a lot of information, uh, but know that you are not in this interview uh, preparation process alone. You can reach out to our team. We are absolutely here to help you. Our office is in Warrior Hall Suite 211. Uh, you can reach out to us by email or phone. Uh, we are also on social media. Kirsten is really great at making sure that we um, are posting excellent opportunities that you might be interested in information about our upcoming events on social media. So make sure that you're following us at TMUCT CPD. Um, and then finally, you can check out our website. We do have a Canvas community page. If you go to Canvas and search for career and professional development uh, bookmark it, there are some great um, templates and additional guidance and information on our Canvas page. And then, of course, you can go to tamuct.joinhandshake.com. That is our job search portal, our on-campus uh, employment job posting place. And that is also where you are going to find information about employer hosted events and our events and then schedule appointments with us. So make sure that you remember that we are here to help you. If you are needing a space to conduct a phone or virtual interview um, and you don't feel like you have a great space to use, let us know. We can help you find a place on campus or make one of our offices available to you if you give us a couple of days notice. Um, if you are concerned about answering any of those behavioral or situational questions or the telltale, tell me about yourself question, please schedule an appointment with us. We would love to help you through some of that so that you can become reflexive and confident in your answers whenever you're discussing yourself and your experiences and your skills. So with that, I will end the recording. Thank you so much for coming and uh, meeting with me today to talk more about um, interviewing.